Hey there, Wargamers, Justin R. Paint here, and today phew, we're going to talk about Zenithal Highlighting. I'd like to welcome you guys back to the channel today and apologize for not having a face cam. Um, I usually try when I can to have two cameras, so one for my face for the intro and then the outro and one for above. Um, I don't have one for the uh, intro right now uh, because it's at work. Um, I borrow equipment from my, my day job uh, when I can, and right now that, that camera's at work. So, uh, But for today, we're going to be covering a topic called uh, Zenithal Highlighting. Um, it's something that you're going to see me do a lot uh, if I'm doing tutorial videos, and I wanted to cover uh, what that is today and explain some things to you. So what do I mean when I use the term zenith or zenithal? So uh, zenith is referring to the a high point kind of in the sky, uh, an arbitrary point above uh, an object. Um, in this case, we're, we're referring to like a light source, so, or a light source. So uh, for this particular mini, um, you could kind of aim for your light source to be like directly above. But for minis, I generally like to have it kind of offset. So like it's this direction, right? So this part being lighter and this part being darker, I just think that makes for a natural gradient that looks really, really nice. Uh, so for that, you will use uh, your airbrush and some primer. In this case, we've got white. Uh, depending on what your paint scheme is going to be, uh, you may have black into gray. You may like actually spray gray and then spray white to get white to get more of a, uh, a gradient or gradation. Um, that's up to you. Uh, it also depends on what paint scheme you're going for. So if you're going to be painting like yellow, for example, you wouldn't want to use black. Yellow over black sometimes makes um, makes your yellows look a little green. Uh, so you would want to use a different process for that. We'll cover that in another video. Uh, but for today, for the majority of your your painting um, endeavors for BattleTech, this style of of, of uh, uh, preparing a miniature is probably going to work out pretty well for you. So uh, let's go ahead and get our airbrush prepped and uh, we'll start spraying on the model so you see what it looks like. And I'll explain afterwards some of the benefits of this and what you might use this for. So when we're approaching the airbrush aspect of this, one of the things that I, I always recommend to people when you're working with an airbrush, always start off the model and then spray onto the model when possible. It's not always going to work, but it's a good habit. And then also test on the back of your hand first. So I've thinned down my primer just a little bit, and I'm going to test my, my flow and my paint on the back of my hand. So I wear a glove, and you can kind of get an idea of what your paint consistency is going to look like. And it's better to spray on your hand and dirty up a glove than it is to uh, spray onto your model directly and mess this up. So with that said, let's go ahead and get in here and start applying our Zenithal Highlight. All right, so we're gonna start by angling the mini here. I'm gonna do the best I can to get this uh, on camera uh, well, but I've currently got it upside down. I kind of got it at an angle here so that my spray is gonna come in at this direction and hit this focal point. Um, so it's a lot easier to change the direction of the model than it is to move your airbrush to a new spot. So change the angle of attack by adjusting your mini. So we'll start. Spray the back of her hand here, and we're going to come in here and hold this guy again at an angle, and start applying some of your paint. You notice I'm making passes, I'm going back and forth, not just spraying one area heavy, kind of going back and forth. Okay, so now we've got a transition. I'd like to get this a little bit uh, brighter on the top, so I've rotated the model here. Really focusing on his head there. Okay. All right, so the top one's pretty bright. We're going to come in and we're also going to spray his feet. Get those a little brighter. Maybe try and hit the tops of his knees. Okay. And then one of the things I also like to do is just give a little spritz on the back of the legs and stuff. Um, now, you lose a little bit of your gradation, but I don't want the back of this to be completely black. I just want the focal point to push forward with your colors to the front. So by doing this, we've got our natural um, transition of gradients and we've got our natural shadows. So from the front where the light source is hitting, you know, the sun is bright, for example, the zenith. So this right here, this is kind of be the apex, so boom, it's hitting. And as it's cascading across, we're getting the natural shadows on the backside and very bright on the front. So. That's really basic. We've got our zenithal highlight applied. Now, what would we use that for? 
So the first thing that the Zenithal highlight is going to help you with is visualizing where the shadows are, which I had mentioned previously. So when you're taking a glance at this model, if you were preparing to paint it, it lets you know when you're applying your colors where the brighter colors should be and where the darker ones should be. So let's say hypothetically, uh, we want to spray this guy blue. That's, that's what we want to do, right? So let's get up tight, nice and tight on this model. So if you were blending colors on here and you're applying your base coats, you know that you want to focus the darker blues in the dark areas and leave some of the lighter colors exposed so you could put your light blue over it. Um, and if you're thinning your paints down, Perhaps you know you're glazing or you're applying uh, paints that have a, a lower opacity, um, so that your your colors show through. This is really going to help. So if you're applying like a, a light blue across the top and it's semi-transparent, as you apply those glazes, the light blue is going over white, so it looks a little brighter, and that blue over the black looks a little darker. So you get a natural transition in your paint coats. That's a little bit more advanced if you're doing white wet blending or lots of glazing. Uh, but I find that just having the zenithal highlight initially for me helps me visualize where I want my colors to go. Um, even if you're not using wet blending or glazing, the other thing that this really helps with is just paint application in general. So naturally when you apply paint over a base coat, um, uh, a primer, the color of primer you choose is going to be uh, dictated by the color of paint that you want. So if you want a dark blue and you prime this black and you put dark blue over black, you're going to have a nice dark blue, right? Um, if you wanted this to be white, you wouldn't want to hand paint white over black. You'd want to go ahead and prime this a light gray or white, right? Uh, so the same thing holds true here. Uh, because I want that natural transition for me, this is going to help naturally when I apply my colors to help them show through better. So the dark areas will naturally look a little bit darker, the light ones a little bit lighter. Now, if you go through and you hand base coat the whole thing at one time, um, it may just completely cover up your zenithal highlights. That's okay, uh, so long as this helped you A, visualize where your light sources would be and where your highlights should go, uh, and C, lets you get a nice thin coat of your paint on there. Uh, to be, I think that just went A to C instead of B. That's what happens, folks. <laughs> get a little confused. Um, the other benefits that you have for this um, is if you are working with any speed paints, contrast paints, things like that. Uh, so once you've got this transition here, you could you could start by just base coating it or priming it rather uh, a bright color like white. If you're using contrast paints and speed paints, the brighter the color, the better your results you're probably going to get. Because when you apply those, it's going to go on and then it's going to pool in the recesses and drain down the model. So naturally the areas that are currently dark will be darker, but they're already black and that paint's pretty translucent. So you're, you're going to get a very dark color over the black areas, right? Over the white areas, you're going to get a very bright color, right? So you could do a solid um, application of, of primer, so white, and do your, your contrast paints. But if you do the zenithal method here where you get the black into white, when you put your contrast paints over it, you're going to get a natural transition without really even having to work too hard at it. Then you can come in with your manual edge highlights or your dry brush and get a really nice quality quickly. So uh, one of the other things you can do with this is use your transparent paints, candy coats, or even uh, speed paints through an airbrush. For this one, um, as a proof of concept to show you guys exactly what you can do with this, we're going to come in with a little bit of contrast paint from Games Workshop, Talisar Blue. Uh, I like uh, a lot of their contrast paints for glazing and uh, kind of use them like inks, but also this application works too. Now, uh, Arclight Miniatures on Instagram, if you follow him, he does this as well. Uh, he refers to this as volumetric lighting. Uh, I essentially think he's doing the same thing. He'll start with really dark colors and he'll come in with his, his grays and whites. I think he's using inks and he'll build up the color. Um, so you get kind of a, a gray scale into white uh, gradient and then you apply your filter or your contrast paint or your ghost tin or transparent paint, whatever, over the top. And this blue over those is going to naturally be dark blue um, kind of uh, a lighter blue and then brighter blue. Uh, so let's go ahead and spray this on here and uh, let you guys see what happens. So as we uh, I say before, always start on the back of your hand, make sure your paint's good to go. I also give like taps like that. Sometimes the paint builds up on the tip. And if you give it a tap, you can dislodge some. Sometimes you can't. If you do this, be very careful. You can do a little pinch method and pull some of that dried paint off. You might also keep um, a toothbrush or something at your desk that you don't care about because you can use that to also dislodge this as well. So, all right. So let's, again, make sure we're good to go. Got good paint flow. Let's come over to our model and apply some paint. Now, 
We're looking for full coverage here, thin coats, just like you would do if you're doing it by hand. When I'm coming back in for the second pair of passes here, I'm uh, trying to focus on uh, getting some in areas that already had it so that it come, applies a second kind of coat there and darkens it up. Okay. So very simple. I'm gonna come in and hit some of the areas I feel like I missed. Areas that still looked black, I feel like I didn't get blue and I don't want the model black, I want a nice dark blue. Gonna hit the undersides of his feet here, or his uh, legs. Okay, and we'll give one more pass across the back. Okay, and just a little bit more for my taste on the front here. So I wanted that to be a little darker so that that light pops. So there you go. That's very simple, straightforward. And you can work this a lot if you're working with an airbrush. Push some of your depth and some of your shadows if you want to and add more. Uh, and this method should work with just about any kind of contrast paint or speed paint. In the future, I will be able to work with some of the Army Painter speed paints. Um, Robert from Fortress Miniatures and Games is sponsoring the channel and he's going to be hooking me up with some paints uh, to pick up here so that I could do some tutorials with you guys and also talk about um, different techniques you can do quickly. Uh, with this one, if I was to try and take it to the next level, uh, we've obviously got a decent gradient on here. I think this looks pretty cool. Got that dark to light transition. Uh, if you come in here next and you hit it with a very nice strategic dry brush going that direction, so like forward and down you're going to get all these panel lines that are getting hit and you're still respecting the dark areas on the back now if you dry brush the whole thing that's not the end of the world you'll still have dark areas but the edges are going to be really bright maybe there's different reflective surfaces and hitting it this really is your canvas and your place to, to do what you want and make this model fun for you if you mess up with the dry brushing your stuff don't worry about it you can come in with some of that contrast paint and fix it or just finish the model and move on some of the highlights on these, some of the Zenith uh, uh, preparation here is not always exact. It's just what looks good to you. So if you have an airbrush, give this method a try and see what you think. If you don't have an airbrush, you could try and use uh, two rattle cans. Use a uh, black into white or black into gray, something like that. And you could do something similar by hand. If you're trying to apply the contrast paint by hand, remember it's going to pool very differently than it does here. So your results may be skewed a little bit, but you should still get some form of a, a gradient from uh, the contrast paint because it's transparent. So, but that being said, guys, thank you so much for tuning in today. If there are any other topics you'd like to see me tackle, sound off in the comments below. As always, hit that subscribe button, like, smash the like button, hit the subscribe button, ding it, all the stuff. And uh, if you're looking to pick up anything uh, Battletech related, make sure you check out fortressminiaturesandgames.com. We'll have a link in the description down below. And if you enjoy this content, you want to see more, sound off in the comments, as I mentioned before, and check out Deathbird Designs, where my day job is. Supporting them helps support me, keeps me employed, and lets me to continue uh, producing content. That being said, I've rambled on enough. Hope you guys enjoyed. I'll be back again soon with some more hopefully painting content, rambling content, and maybe some battle reports. As always, folks, keep painting those models, keep rolling those dice, and I'll catch you guys next time. Mm -hmm.